Hello, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. So recently I came out with a video and it talked about how I tested various types of conductive cloth and how I might, those might be used for, let's say, protecting automobiles or generators or solar panels. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about that today. People were having some questions. I try and answer those in the comments, but I thought maybe a second video might be helpful. So basically what I did is I tested uh, 25 different types of cloth. I settled upon one that I liked um, for a variety of reasons, and I talk about that in the previous video. But it's easy to handle, uh, won't tarnish, it seems like it's pretty rugged. Um, this one uses stainless steel fibers, which I like. Um, and, and overall, it just seems like it, it's a good quality product. So lots of folks wonder, well, you know, how does this compare with, let's say, aluminum foil, and can you build a Faraday cage out of it, that sort of thing. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So, the shielding of a conductive cloth is, is not as good as, let's say, sol a solid conductor like aluminum foil. And in fact, it's not meant to be. So it's not really designed to, let's say, build a Faraday cage. Although you can, you just won't get quite the, the shielding effect of a good one made out of aluminum foil, let's say, or galvanized garbage can. But with that said, it has its place. And its place is really used to protect things that are difficult to protect, difficult to wrap with a Faraday cage, such as an automobile, a large generator, maybe solar panels. Um, even like electro-optics on a rifle. So things that are difficult to protect, difficult to put inside of something, the cloth can really help with that. Now, remember what it has to do. It's not trying to block an EMP. You're not going to block an EMP, right? If you get a 50,000 volt per meter pulse, you're not going to block it. What you're trying to do is survive it, all right? And cars, let's say, or generators, they're inherently um, pretty rugged and pretty difficult to damage from electromagnetic energy anyway. If they weren't, cars would be dying all the time as you pass transmission lines and other things. So what we want to do is bring the field levels down enough that the car can survive the EMP. So the cloth will do that. In fact, the cloth will reduce it by between 90 and 97 percent, which is enough. So if you have a 50,000 volt per meter, it can certainly drop it below 5,000 volts per meter, which the car could survive especially when unpowered, which is when the cloth, of course, is used. So what I wanted to do was just show a couple of simple experiments. I think people were a little confused. Um, they maybe thought that the cloth, you know, they could wrap up their cell phone and not be able to receive a signal. And as I've talked about in, in other videos, using things like cell phones or two-way radios or even AM, FM radios is really a hit and miss sort of way of testing uh, conductive materials because you have no control of the, of the signal level, of the receiver inside of the electronics. And some of those can receive very, very tiny signals. Uh, in fact, sometimes you have to have you know, excess of 100 dB of shielding to block um, the radio signal. So, uh, and I demonstrate that in a, in a video I have on YouTube where I try and block two-way radio signals using good quality EMP bags. And what you find is that no matter how good a quality the EMP bag, you'll never block a two-way radio with just a single layer. Um, really good quality EMP bags require three layers to block a two-way radio signal, and that's because you have to block about 120 dB of dynamic range, which is very difficult to do. So again, what we want to do with the cloth is provide, let's say, between 20 and 30 dB of protection, about 90 to 97 percent of the signal block, um, and it will do that. And so what I'll do is I'll do a couple of demonstrations just to show you the general idea of the cloth, and I'll talk about some questions that people have. First thing I want to show is just using the cloth to block an FM signal that's operating at about 105 megahertz. Now, I'll, I'll show it block the signal, but then I want to talk about the limitations of why this is generally not a good idea to try and determine if something is a good shield or not. But with that said, let me go ahead and turn on the radio, and then I'll put the cloth over it and we'll see the radio signal drop out, and then I'll talk about the limitations of that. Okay, so we have a a good strong FM radio signal. Hopefully you can hear that. And I'll just take the cloth, I just bundled some up here on the floor, and I'll just put it, I'm not going to be particularly careful, but I'll just cover the chair. Sort of like you might cover a car. So hopefully you can hear that the, the radio has dropped out, it's lost reception. When I uncover it, you'll hear the radio signal come back. Okay, so came back just fine. 
All right, so that's an idea of using like an FM radio just to sort of show that the cloth indeed is conductive. It can block an, um, a radio transmission. Now I want to talk about the limitation of that. Okay, so what I did in that experiment was I just took an FM radio, tuned in a station that looked like it was pretty strong, and covered the, the radio with the cloth, and showed that the signal could indeed be blocked. Well, what does that really show? It doesn't show a whole lot. It really just shows that the cloth indeed is conductive and it will block radio signals, but we don't know to what level. It doesn't really tell us the level of the shielding. It's possible that I could have tuned in a different station, a really strong station, let's say, even stronger than that one, and maybe I couldn't block it. What would that mean? Would that mean the cloth was no good? And indeed, it wouldn't mean that either, because you don't know the strength of the signal and you don't know the receiver inside of the radio. You don't know how easily it adjusts and how well it adjusts to very weak signals coming in. Some radios can pick up very tiny signals. They have compensation and gain networks inside of them that adjust dynamically to try and pick up those weak signals as well as then they turn the gain down when they're trying to pick up very strong signals. And you have no control of that and no knowledge of that. So that's why radios are such a difficult um, thing to try and use to determine shielding. And I don't recommend them. I'm only showing this as a demonstration so that you get an idea of how the cloth might work. So in this case, yes. I set it up, drape the cloth over, it blocks the signal. So, okay, so we have some confidence that indeed the cloth is shielding. Um, but again, we can't determine the level specifically. So how do you determine the level? Well, you determine the level by setting up a controlled experiment. In my case, what I do is I set up a transmitter, a broadband transmitter, where I can adjust the frequency and the power level, and I put a spectrum analyzer rather than a radio as the receiver. The spectrum analyzer will tell me specifically what the signal level is. So I know before I cover it what the signal level is. I can then cover it with cloth and measure the new signal level after I've covered it. That will tell me exactly how much shielding that cloth has provided. And that's what I've done for all of the cloths that I tested and that's why I ultimately settled on this one. That was one reason was this cloth provided good shielding. Uh, again between 20 and 30 dB which is about 90 to 97 percent of the signal is blocked across the frequencies of interest. Now, I believe that's good enough. Um, that would take, even in the worst case of a 50,000 volt per meter EMP, down to levels that a car that was unpowered, or a generator that was unpowered, or even a solar panel that was unpowered, all of which would survive that type of level. So, again, the cloth is a conductive cloth. It's meant to act as a protective barrier. It doesn't work as well as a true Faraday cage. A good Faraday cage might provide 99.7% shielding, which is very, very good. And for some electronics, very sensitive electronics, that's really useful. And in fact, it might be critical. For cars and generators and things like that, which have some inherent shielding, they're already meant to be high current um, equipment, typically they don't require that level of shielding. No testing has ever shown that you need that level of shielding on, it, let's say, a vehicle or a generator. So what we're trying to do is protect an unpowered piece of equipment using conductive cloth. And I think this cloth does a very good job of that. If you have questions about how the tests are conducted, or any questions in general about EMP or protective cloth or EMP bag, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll do my best to try and answer them. And thank you again for your time.